I'm a 22-year-old French student, currently pursuing my master's degree in Amsterdam. I live on my own, in an apartment within a student-only building. The neighborhood is calm and nice, with the occasional sounds of trams passing by, or the distant noise of parties in other student buildings. But one night, it was around 10 o'clock, when I heard a knock on my apartment door. I live on the third floor, and to reach my front door, you have to use a key to open the main entrance, and then another key to open the door to my hallway. This means that only people with a key can come in. If someone wants to visit, they can give me a call or ring my doorbell, and I'll open the door for them. It adds an extra layer of security to our building, ensuring that only authorized people can access our floors. On a regular day when I heard someone knocking on my door, I usually open the door without much thought, whether it's my landlord checking in or a neighbor asking for something. As I've mentioned, I generally feel safe in my building and I can take care of myself if needed. But this time, for some reason, I had an uneasy feeling. It's not that I felt an immediate danger, but something felt off. At first, I didn't do anything. As I figured the person would go away, I had just finished my assignment and wanted some peace, but the knocking didn't stop. I stayed put, thinking they'd leave soon, and I could finally relax after my hard work. However, the knocking continued for a good 30 seconds. So I decided to speak up and said, Hello? The voice replied in English, saying, It's Uber Eats. It seemed strange because most people here usually speak Dutch, and I recognized the voices of those who live on my floor. But it wasn't a neighbor or my landlord. The person claimed to be from Uber Eats, but the thing is, I didn't order anything from Uber Eats that day. It made me feel a bit confused. Also, the voice sounded strange, like maybe someone playing a prank or a neighbor trying to trick me. It was a deep voice, maybe around 40 years old, and definitely sounded like a person who smokes a lot. I said, I didn't order anything, you might have the wrong address. But a few seconds later, the knocking kept going, and the same voice said, I'm pretty sure you did. I have an order under your name. Now, that made me panic. I looked around and grabbed a baseball bat, just in case he tried to break the door because the knocking was getting louder and stronger. I checked if the door was locked, and to my horror it wasn't. I was only 10 centimeters away from him, and my front door was the only thing keeping him from coming in. But luckily the door didn't open from the outside without a key, even though it wasn't locked. So I took a step back and asked again, What's the name? He seemed to be thinking for a few seconds, and then there was another loud knock. It felt like he was really angry and frustrated. Then after a few minutes, he gave up and went down the emergency stairs next to my apartment. The steps were really loud, and it seemed like the person was in a big hurry. I wasn't sure what he wanted or what might happen if I opened the door. I still don't get how he got through the first two doors. Then I thought if he tried knocking on other doors before mine. So I shared the incident on our building's WhatsApp group, asking if anyone else had seen something unusual. It turns out, nobody witnessed anything suspicious, and no one had opened the door for anyone else. But I'm fortunate that my instincts kicked in, warning me not to open the door. Three years back, my wife and I bought our first house in the fancy part of the city, and we picked a place near my mom's house since she's been on her own since my dad passed away. My mom was born in South Africa before there was a vaccine for polio, and she got affected by the disease. She can't move her legs, so she has been using crutches or a wheelchair all her life. My wife and I really wanted a house near hers so that we could visit her a lot and take care of her. We also wanted to make sure she can be independent and do her own stuff without feeling like we're always watching her. I always worried about something happening to my mom, so it made me feel better knowing I could quickly go to her place to help, no matter if it was a small issue or a big problem. But one summer night in 2019, something bad happened. 
which I wasn't ready for. In the middle of the summer, I drove my mom to the airport. As she was going to South Africa to see her sister and my cousins, because my older brother lives in another city and I'm close by, I took on the job of looking after her house while she was away. So I made sure to visit twice a week. It became my routine to water the plants, pick up the mail, check the answering machine, and do all the usual things that need doing in a house. I wanted to make sure everything was in order for when she came back home. Thankfully, a year ago, I got a security system for my mom's house. It's like having a helper that keeps an eye on things, even when I'm not there. I set it up so I can use my phone to see what's happening at her place anytime. If a window or door is opened, or if something sets off the alarm, my phone lets me know immediately. I made sure to put everything in for security, except cameras. And later in the story, I'd regret not having them. But in my own house, I have cameras everywhere, inside and outside. They watch over everything, from my motorcycle in the garage to my snoozing dog in the living room. Fast forward a month. I finished work, hit the gym, watched a movie with my wife, and got ready for bed. Nothing unusual so far, right? But just after two in the morning, my phone started making a noise. I thought it might be an email or something from Instagram, so I ignored it. I really value my sleep, as I usually get around five hours a night. After I started dozing off, my phone kept making noise, again and again. My wife woke up and said, Turn it off. I'm trying to sleep. She often teased me about keeping the volume on at night, but I do it just in case of an emergency, or if my mom needs us. I'm glad I didn't turn the volume off, because when I tried to check the notifications, it hit me suddenly, like a car crashing through my living room. I got a bunch of messages from the security system at my mom's house. Right then, the company watching the system calls my phone, and I pick up. The lady on the phone tells me that the home alarm is going off because the motion detector in the basement noticed movement several times. Then she says they've sent security people to check on my mom's house to make sure everything's okay. While I was on the phone with the lady, I checked the message again from the security system. I could see what she was telling me. I also looked at the locks on my mom's doors, and the system said they were all locked. Without looking more, I suddenly understood. Someone or something is inside the house right now. Remember, I was suddenly woken up from sleep and told that maybe someone broke into my mother's house. I was still half asleep, and I didn't have time to clear the fog in my mind. Because of that, I jumped to the wrong conclusion and I thought my mother could be in danger. I quickly got out of bed and ran to the garage. I only paused to put on my shoes and grab my car keys. It was good I had pajama pants on because it was a cold night. I didn't stop to pick up a shirt, jacket, or any kind of weapon. I was in a hurry to reach my mother's place. Luckily, I had a strong flashlight in my car, like the ones the police use, which I usually bring for exploring around the city. So I grabbed the flashlight, placed it on my lap, started the car, and pushed the gas pedal down fast. I went way faster than the speed limit in the neighborhood to get to the house in a hurry. Trying to drive like a racer really wakes you up. When I reached my mom's house, I saw that all the lights were still off, exactly how I had left them. The alarm was so loud that it hurt my ears. People from nearby houses started coming outside, but there were no security patrol cars in sight. I ran to the front door while unlocking it from my phone. But when I yanked the door open, I found myself staring into the dark entryway of my mother's house. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I couldn't move. I was frozen with fear. Despite being 25 years old at the time, I had never faced anything so frightening before. I've been through some pretty intense and crazy stuff before, even situations where my life was at risk. But nothing scared me as much as looking into what I was sure was the entrance to really scary things that happened in my childhood home. Just to note, at this moment, while standing at the door, my brain still hadn't reminded me that my mom was safe, chilling at my aunt's beach house in South Africa. With the thought of my mom in my head, my bravery kicked in. 
Step by step, I went into the house. I think my body's fight or flight switch got stuck on fight because I went searching instead of checking my mom's room. I literally hit the switch that turns on the lights in the basement, ready for a big fight. But, you know what? To this day, I'm not sure if it was a huge relief or if I was terrified. Because when I looked around, there was absolutely nothing there. Not a single thing. I looked around where I was standing. The windows in the main part of the basement were fine. The lights from the motion detector were blinking, and my phone was buzzing to tell me about my own movements in the house. Then I realized, standing out in the open in the basement wasn't a smart thing to do. So I ran back upstairs, turning on all the lights in the kitchen as I went. I grabbed the biggest knife from the block. Then I went to my mother's room. I checked every corner, doorway, closet, and even under each piece of furniture. I did it slowly and carefully, making sure everything was okay, until I felt sure the main floor of the house was safe. I was sure the person who shouldn't be there must be in the basement. I took out my phone and turned off the home alarm so I could listen carefully. Then I checked the main room again, under the pool table, behind the couch, and even in the bathroom, but found nothing. But as I turned to go down the hallway, I saw the door to the guest bedroom was closed. I couldn't remember if I had closed it before or during another visit, so I walked up to the door slowly, trying my best to hear any sound. I grabbed the door handle and pulled it open. I can't be sure, but I might have gotten really scared. When I saw someone at the other end of the room with a big knife, I had to try my hardest not to faint. I was really, really scared, but I knew I had to do something. I gathered my courage bit by bit and reached for the light switch, ready to fight the intruder. The light came on, and I dropped to my knees, crying. That's when I realized I was looking at my own reflection. The closet door in the bedroom had mirrored panels, and in the dark, they made me see something that looked like a scary person. Then I heard a car door close outside, and I thought it was the security patrol arriving in the driveway. The guy who claimed to be a security officer was standing there, but he looked younger than me. If you imagine the word intimidating in your mind, this man was the opposite. He was a bit chubby, smiling, and had a really young-looking face. He looked more like someone welcoming you into a house. I checked my watch, and the man had come a whole hour after I told the security company to send someone. I told the guy that I searched every part of the house and didn't find anything. I started to wonder not-so-nice thoughts about how useless this guy, pretending to be a security officer, but I'm a bit embarrassed about those thoughts now. Then, he asked me if I checked the garage. My clever grin disappeared quickly. I reached for the button in my car that opens the garage door. The garage is an open space, and it's really hard to hide in there. I walked through, peeked inside the car, and then left the garage. I felt sure it was empty. The security officer gave me some papers to sign. Basically, it said he did come when the home alarm went off. I told him about the basement motion detector, showing lots of times where it recorded movement. Then I saw his face go pale, as he explained that the detectors his company uses don't just sense movement, but also check for changes in temperature in the room to avoid false reports of movement. After telling me this, he got into his car and drove away. I locked up the house, turned on the outside lights, and set the security system again. I leaned against my car, looking at the house, trying to figure out how the alarm could have gone off. It's supposed to work when it senses movement and heat, but there didn't seem to be anyone around. The very next day, I made sure to get security cameras installed outside the house, in the garage, and where the motion detectors were placed. It's been two years since that night, and I haven't shared this incident with my mom, brother, or my wife. I'm still puzzled. Was there really someone there? Or was there some weird reason for the alarm going off? 
I really hope I never have to experience that again. Sometimes not knowing the answer is the better choice. I met this guy while I was still with my boyfriend, but despite being 10 years older than me, if I recall correctly, he wasn't someone I found attractive. We only had about 20 minutes of conversation, and it was all very impersonal and polite exchanges. I only talked to him when it was absolutely necessary. It was just basic talk, nothing more. Well, my boyfriend and I started dating, and somehow that other guy knew about it. One night, when we were excited to go to the club together, we noticed that this guy was following us. It made me nervous, and I started freaking out. I ran to the bathroom with my friend for safety, while our boyfriend turned around to talk to him. That guy, however, started acting really immature, like a five-year-old boy. He even started crying, and then ran away, leaving the nightclub. Then about a month later, I found a disturbing love letter in my mailbox. It was creepy because he had delivered it himself to my house, meaning that this guy had followed me to my door before and found out where I live. Fast forward one year, and I don't go to the place I met him anymore because he practically lives there. My friends told me he hangs out there every day, almost like he's waiting for me to show up. We moved after a while, and during that summer at the new place, I started noticing that guy at the mall. At first, I thought it was just a coincidence but then a shop owner I know well tells me that the guy's been following me and even hides when I turn around. That really worried me. So I shared the whole story with the shop owner. He was concerned too and promised to let other store owners know about the situation. He also assured me that he would call security the next time if he sees that creepy guy following me. I now have my own first professional level full-time stalker and my boyfriend and I were clueless about what to do. My family was just as lost, and we were super worried. The police couldn't do much since this guy wasn't doing anything harmful at the time. It's been well over two years, and things are tough. I don't want to work as a waitress even though I really need the money, because I know he would find out where I work and then sit there all day and night just watching me. I try not to work anywhere near the place I first met this guy, especially around the city center. Going to the mall alone is a no-go for me now. I always bring my boyfriend along. There are specific supermarkets and cafes I steer clear of because I know he hangs out there, hoping to see me. It's disturbing because I don't even know his last name, but he has a strange control over where I can go or not. I really wish I could leave the city, but it's not easy. Even if I manage to go somewhere else, he knows both my first and last name, and all I know about him is his first name and what he looks like. It's kind of scary because he could find me easily. The situation might get even riskier once I finish university. I'm aiming for a teaching position, and they put all your information on the internet. So it makes me worry about my safety and what he might do. They have to do it so students can see. He might come to my open classes or lectures, sit down and pretend to be a student, but I really hope that never happens. All right, it was my time to go out with my kids for Halloween. Last year, my wife did it, and we switch every year. My son is seven and my daughter is nine, and they were super excited all dressed up in their cool costumes. I usually stay on the street, keeping an eye on them while they run from house to house for candy. After about 30 minutes of walking, we reached a really good spot for getting lots of candy, a busy street in our neighborhood. There were so many cool decorations and things in people's front yards, so I got a little distracted, and I wasn't paying close attention to my kids. Then a few minutes later, they came back from a house with another girl, who was about the same height as my daughter. But the interesting thing was, she had this really weird homemade mask on. It looked like it was made from some kind of cardboard or similar material. Then my daughter asked if her new friend could come along for trick-or-treating. 
I said, of course. So we all went together as a group. I didn't know much about the girl, but I guessed she might be a friend from school or somewhere. As we walked, I noticed a really tall man following us. He was big, and I started to feel a bit uneasy. I couldn't figure out if he was just enjoying the decorations too, or if something else was going on. He had this mask that looked like an angry cat, which kind of gave me the shivers. Then I thought he might be the girl's dad, so I tried to start a little conversation with him. I said something like, Um, nice weather, huh? But he didn't reply. He just stood there, staring at me with that creepy cat mask while our kids went up the stairs to the next house. I tried to brush it off, thinking maybe he's just not a talkative person. I asked again, saying, Hey, is that your daughter? He just nodded, but he still didn't say anything. I thought maybe he's just not into talking, so I stopped trying to chat with him. We kept going for about 15 more minutes, going to different houses and collecting more candy. Then my kids came up to me and said they wanted to go home. This surprised me because we hadn't been out for too long, and their bags were only about a third full. Anyway, I said okay. We waved goodbye to the man with the cat mask and his daughter, then started going home. But the strange part was when I looked back at them, they were just standing there, staring at us. I checked one more time as we turned the corner, and they were still standing there, not moving at all. At this point, I decided to ask my kids, so, um, who was that girl? My daughter looked up at me with a really confused look on her face. She's your friend, my daughter replied, looking pretty confused too. I was puzzled because I didn't recognize the girl, and it seemed odd that my daughter thought she was my friend. I asked her what she meant by that. Turns out the girl with the cardboard mask had come up to my kids. She told my daughter that she was a friend of mine, and explained that she was too shy to ask me directly if she could join us for trick-or-treating so she hoped my daughter could ask me on her behalf. I didn't know the girl, but it seemed like a misunderstanding. Maybe she thought she knew me or got confused. Why would you think she was my friend? I don't have any friends who are kids. What my daughter said next truly surprised me and sent a chill down my spine. She explained that when the girl with the cardboard mask first came up to them, she wasn't even wearing the mask. So they saw her face and it wasn't someone familiar. I couldn't understand why the girl would say she was my friend if we didn't even recognize each other. Later, we found out that she wasn't a girl at all. She was actually an older woman about my age with wrinkles on her face. What's even more disturbing is that this older woman had been quietly taking treats from my daughter's bag when I wasn't looking. That's why they wanted to go home because they noticed the woman taking their candies. I brought my kids home and explained everything to my wife. We checked through all their candy, looking closely, but we didn't find anything suspicious or strange. We didn't call the police or anything because, well, nothing really bad happened. But now thinking about it, I kind of wish we had made a different choice. It's really weird that some people on Halloween wear masks to pretend to be kids.